Alright, so I am back after not doing tutorials for a while. I am here doing another tutorial. So what we're going to be making today is this thing. Uh, so yeah, we just have some falling boxes. And this is actually just one falling box. And it's an Alembic. Which we are copying to a grid. And then we're time offsetting it. So I actually have another tutorial as well. Also about time offsetting instances. But there we are using a BGO sequence. Um, here we are using Alembics. And this has some benefits uh, because we can actually retime this as well. So we're not 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 uh, we don't have to use integer frames. We can also use subframes, which is pretty useful. So both techniques, I guess, have have their pros and cons. And actually, I'm recording this tutorial because someone asked me something about my tutorial using the uh, BGOs to uh, time offset instances. And uh, then I mentioned, oh, do you know the thing with the Alembics? And he didn't. Uh, and I have my regrowth course, which also discusses this technique, but that's of course a little bit harder to find because then you'd need, uh, like if you were to Google time offsetting instances, you wouldn't find that one. So hopefully you will be able to find this one with the new title. Uh, so yeah, let's just get going. So let me just copy and paste this entire thing over here. So we don't have to do that again. Let me just make a new node. Let's call it just example tutorial. So I'm just gonna paste that in. And you can download all these files on my website. Um, link will be in the description. You can either get it in Gumroad or if you're a Patreon supporter, it should also be there. So uh, yeah, just what we're just doing here is just fracturing the box. This is real quick, uh, putting the constraints to zero so it doesn't stick together. And then we just have the bullet solver, which will just, which has a grid plugged in, which it will fall on. So pretty simple and then we're we're saving it out and then let's load it back in by copying that parameter and paste relative references here on the box. All right, so now we have a falling box. Now let's copy this to a grid. So let's make a grid. Let's make it a tree by tree grid or make it whatever you want. But in this case, we're going to do two points. We're going to copy to the target points. And then we need to transform our thing here. So it's actually falling in the right direction. All right, prop, something like that. All right, uh, so now I need to start explaining uh, intrinsics. You know about attributes, which are things over here. Well, you, you should, if you're using Houdini, you should be familiar with, it is, with these attributes. And of course you have point, vertex, uh, primitive, and detail. There's actually also something else called intrinsic. So let me just, Make a null here on the right. So we just have something to point to our Alembic. So um, here you can see our Alembic does only has one primitive attribute called path, but also there's actually a tab here called intrinsics. And there's actually a lot of intrinsics. And what intrinsics actually are, let me just open the definition. It's, it's, it's our, there are attributes that are being computed by Houdini on the fly. So let me see if I can um, intrinsic. Let's see what Houdini intrinsic values are similar to attributes, but are computed on demand by Houdini rather than stored. So essentially, they have a whole bunch of things here, like the Pactful transform. Like these are things that if you're gonna do rigid body dynamics on like a like a lower level skill, you're gonna be um, uh, using those quite a lot. In my aggregation tutorial series, we're also using those a lot. But what we're interesting interested in right now is the ABC frame. So that's the frame of the Alembic that's being loaded. So if I just blast through it, you can see it's actually just so it's similar now. It's set to well, essentially to uh, to the time, so at time, and we can actually override this with a wrangle. So let me just put a wrangle here. Let's put it to primitives because uh, we are going to do this on a primitive because you can see points don't have intrinsics, primitive have intrinsics. All right, and what we can do is type set prim intrinsic, open bracket. And if we now just press F1 on this thing, then it's going to open up the help file. All right, 
So we want to set this parametrinsic ourselves. So do you handle first input, of course, what do we want to set? And you can, of course, type anything you want to set here. But in our case, we want the ABC frame. So we're going to say it's a string. So it needs to be between these things. Primitive number. Um, yeah, in this case, I guess we could just put zero. Later, we're going to change it or we could already do this as just put point number. Later, we're going to have copies, right? So then it's going to be for each point individually. Um, which value? Let's put it to dollar. So at time for now, and we want to set it. All right. So now, well, nothing has changed because, I mean, we're setting it to time. But if we were to put this to zero, then still nothing would happen because you can see here, still zero. Because this is a float. And if I put zero here, it's going to be an integer. If I put 0, 0, .0 you can see now it's actually stick sticking to this location here. Right, let's make a slider to offset this ourselves. So let's say float uh, time equals jump float time. Let's make a slider. Whoop. And let's just type that we want to put the time in here. And oh, I don't, it doesn't like time. Let's put, make it call. Actually, it makes sense. It doesn't like that. Um, doo -doo -doo, why is it not working? Oh, wait. I'm typing it in the wrong spot. Sorry. All right. It needs to be put over there, of course. Yep. There we go. So now I can control my time with my slider. And now you can see the benefit to doing this with a limbic frame. So I can actually, like, I can have subframes. You can make it really slow. So I could also, like, if I were to put it time here, then it would play back with the regular time. If I were to put time mine divided by five, now it would be slow motion. So, and you couldn't do this with the BGO technique. So, and we can also do this on our copies. So if I just press play here, just put it to time here. You can see now we're doing it just on our copies. So that's pretty cool. Um, what we could also do is like make a random value, float r equals random based on the point number. So each thing here will be a point. As you can see, nine points, three, six, nine. All right, so we're going to creating a random value between zero and one with the, that's just what the random value does. And let's say uh, r equals fit zero, one. And then let's say that we want um, want to fit R and we want to say zero two. And let's say time minus R, something like that. So now we're subtracting something from our intrinsic frame here. Now it's going neg negative here. Um, so it's gonna, it's not gonna work. Um, Time minus R. Uh, why are you not working? Oh, you are working. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Just makes it a little bit more pronounced if I put this higher. I guess if you want this to be a little bit more clean, you could say that if um, R is below zero, then just R equals zero. Oh, no, let's not do that. Let's do if t is below zero, then t equals zero. I mean, like it's, it works without that, but this would look a little bit more clean in your spreadsheet. So yeah, that's essentially all there is to it. Um, so yeah, now you know. And of course, like if you wanted to change some of this stuff, like if you wanted to still be slow motion, you could like divide it by three. And now it would be slow motion and it would have to offset. So like you can do all of these things. Um, all right, so yeah, that was it. Uh, just a brief quick tip. Hope you liked it. If you did, give this thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. Helps out YouTube algorithm. Uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want more of these videos. Uh, now again, 
a little bit more regularly after my brief hiatus for the past two months. Um, but yeah, see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>